And I always posit we will see another big hit in the Dow. It won't be for the same reasons, the same backdrop, uh, you know, the, the, the same sort of precipitance. But we'll see it. That's the way history goes. It doesn't necessarily repeat itself. What's that line? It does have a habit of rhyming. Uh, so what to make of what happened then and whether it could happen again. Market watchers Brian Westbury, Jonathan Corpina, neither, by the way, was even alive back then, but they're <laughs> sharing their expertise <laughs> now. Um, Brian, you know, there's so many different yep. elements then. I was reminded of the fact that on this date 30 years ago, a 10-year note uh, jumped over 10 percent, never got that high uh, again or since. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, what do you make of that anomaly? Right, well, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I don't think it's going to happen these days. Uh, interest rates were soaring just before the market crash. We also had this big Paris Accord uh, over currency. So, and, and in fact, it, people still are, are debate about why that happened. But what we do know is if you would have bought that day uh, at the bottom, uh, even if you would have bought before it happened, uh, it, you would have made a, t a, a killing in the equities markets in the next 10, 20 years. And by the way, I was through puberty at that time. I actually worked. <laughs> I, I actually worked at the Harris Bank in Chicago, wow. and we would watch that. We were watching this market crash on the Quotron. It's a little black screen oh, with the sure, green. Sure. You know, it looked felt like you were in an, the Apollo rocket or something. And 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 I remember walking out of the bank that day. I had to take the elevator down from the seventh floor. I don't know why, but it felt like the whole world had ended. But the minute I walked out on the street, I almost got run over by a bus. People were running to catch the train. Nothing had changed. And that's when I kind of knew everything would be OK, you know. But but if you just live in that screen, you thought the world had come to an end. And. Uh, today, I don't think we have those kinds of conditions. Yeah, you know, I always like to remind people, Jonathan, not that, you know, you always say, oh, you know, buy on these dips. And, of course, that was a very special circumstance. But remember, we had gotten down to around 1,738 on the Dow um, on that day after that 508-point hit. And now here we are a little bit north of 23 thousand of course uh, not not right. a lot of people look at a 30-year time horizon on that but generally the rule of thumb is you are richly rewarded sticking with the market through the ups and downs over time you can't time these things but let me posit this to today if you don't mind uh, and Jonathan I'm looking at a market now at 23,000 um, and and a young person coming up to you today and saying you know Jonathan I want in on the market right now I've never been in but I want in what do you tell them you know that's a Neil uh, a great question Neil I hosted 30 students down here yesterday from the business school at Catholic University of America and one of the students asked me that exact same question. I'm getting out of college, I'm going into business school, I'm in business school, do I invest in the market at this time? And I think historically when you look over time there have been a lot of ups and downs in the markets and there are always these opportunities, right? And if you look at the types of companies that we have here and the types of companies we invest in, in the long run they are going to be here, they are going to be uh, right. profitable and, and they do have the right outlook for moving forward. So yes, we are trading at all times highs. There are investors who have been in the this market who are wondering do I get out there are some that have missed this move and are wondering if I get if you get in but if you look at a chart like you said over 30 years you don't even have to look at 30 years look at the last 11 months right we're up 25 percent there were many points there that could have been entry or exit points but all along you still have had some money involved here in, in this market and we're seeing it translate into other areas clearly jobs have gotten better earnings have gotten better the housing market has gotten better so as our economy has gotten better everything has risen with it you know, I'm always reminded, too, that we, we, we now see the signs afterwards. You know, it's easy to play the Monday morning quarterback, the ah, ah you know. Right. Uh, but, Brian, one of the things I noticed and I remember about that time with the 87 crash, remember this is pre-puberty, when I, I, I saw that, that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday before, we had some big hits right. in the Dow. Yep. I think on the 14th, on Wednesday, the Dow fell close to 4%. Yep. On the 15th, Thursday, it fell about 2.5%. On the Friday, before 108 points at the time, 4.5%. So something was was brewing. What was it? Right. Yeah, it, well, you know, going back to that time, we had this currency uh, agreement we were making with the Europeans. And back, this was pre Euro as well, remember? So we were trying to make this a plot. It was called the Plaza Accord. Uh, interest oh, rates sure. were yeah, also, yeah. yeah, interest rates were also going up dramatically the dollar was super strong um, and that's when it sort of turned and so there were all kinds of things going on but but you know brexit we were down six percent in in just a couple of days and if you would have taken that as a sign 
that we were going to have another crash like 1987, you would have been wrong. In fact, the market turned around after a couple of big drops after Brexit uh, and went straight back up again. I, I, I don't know anyone who can really time the market, Neil. And that's one of the things. So, yeah, this was a huge event. It was massive. It really was. Scared people. But if you look back over history, it's a blip now. When, it really you, I'm so it, glad you said it, it, it. It's a blip now. You know, Jonathan, I do remember Ronald Reagan at that time, too. He's the president at that time. He had a newly appointed Fed chair had just taken the helm in August of that year. But Reagan was criticized, I remember, for not being that flummoxed over this. So he kind of shrugged his shoulders right. and said, markets will go on, et cetera. Um, he was proven right. I, I, I'm just wondering whether we get so panicked in the moment, not that you shouldn't in the middle of a free fall like that and just dismiss it, but to take the big picture view, it's kind of hard to do that in the middle of something, isn't it? Right. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you look at President Reagan, he was the ultimate actor, and he had to uh, he had to play that role at that time to calm the markets and to calm the investors. But I, I think you are right. You have to take a step out of that situation that we're in. Um, you know, as as my my colleague here mentioned, Brexit. We were down six percent. If there was panicking within that moment right there, things could have gotten a lot worse, and you Absolutely. could have de definitely missed a lot of opportunities yeah. out of there. So you really right. have to take a look at the bigger picture. Think Think of all the major things, um, the negative headlines that we've seen in our markets over the last two, three years, whether they're terrorist attacks and, and fast forward to North Korea and hurricanes. Our market seems to absorb these negative headlines, takes a little bit of a step back, takes right. a little bit of a pause, and then continues to move higher. And I think also our, right. our mentality has changed in general, right? A lot of lessons were learned in 87, a lot of lessons learned in 2008, 2009. The risk parameters are much different now. Whether they're portfolio managers that have risk on, they take it off real quick, whether it's the exchanges that have these collars in place that when we see large fluctuations in the markets, we halt, we pause, we take a deep breath. But that to doesn't see what's stop that kind of stuff from it, happening. It, it doesn't, but it know? takes it gives people the it ability to, to it, take right. a step back and really just evaluate right. what's happening. Gentlemen, I want to thank yeah, you, you both. Know, Good, real, in the finish yeah, that thought, he, Brian, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to real quick. Burl Sprinkle was Ronald Reagan's chief economist at the time, and he argued strenuously, don't close the markets. And there were a number of people in Reagan's cabinet that wanted to close the markets, and Burl won that argument. Hmm. And thank goodness he did, because that's what a market should do, is be able to clear. And so I'm so glad we didn't close the markets back on that day in uh, 1987. Yeah, imagine if we had, and, and the pent yep. up, the selling pressure. I think it would have been, been a huge problem. Yeah. All right, guys, thank, thank you both. Thank Burl Sprinkle for that. Uh, yep. Interesting. We'll, we'll flash back in time. I appreciate it, guys. Thank, thank you. Have you. a good day. All right.